This is a cheap HDMI wireless transmission system. Which one actually goes on the camera and which goes on the monitor? I'm assuming the transmission comes from the camera and receiving goes to the monitor. That's better. I'm shooting all my videos as a one-man band, manual focusing everything myself. So as I've shown before, I find it very handy to have a separate monitor on my desk so when I need to pull focus on something, I can just stay where I am, look at the monitor in front of me, pull focus instead of needing to stand up and get behind the camera. Works great except for the part where every two weeks or so I trip on this HDMI cable and send everything toppling and break stuff. So with a wireless HDMI transmitter, I can cut the giant cable out of the equation and there we go. No more cable to trip on, problem solved. But of course, nothing in my world is that simple. This thing has an internal battery that's probably gonna die after a couple hours. I'm running my whole system on giant 20 volt drill batteries, so I wanna tap this into that system. I'm not seeing any screws on this thing, so we're gonna have to get destructive here. This set I bought is the Shimble TP Nano, I think. It was basically the cheapest and smallest HDMI transmitter I could find from a reputable brand. This is not sponsored though, because I'm not sure they'd be happy with what I'm about to do. Now this one seems to be marketed towards phones. It's got MagSafe on the back and it's powered just by USB-C. They have a larger one that has actual power inputs for rigging, but I value compactness in my setups. And really, I see no reason that I couldn't just disconnect this battery, tap in wires to here that power it with five volts and it won't know the difference in theory. Once again, I'm using a monitor to pull focus on myself disassembling the monitor. So here's what I'm thinking right now. We got three pins. I don't know why, but one of those is gonna be positive. One of them is gonna be negative. I'm trying to pry off this battery, but it's glued down and I don't really feel like blowing up today. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this whole back thing. I really don't like magnets in my camera gear because it's gonna get a ton of uh, shrapnel and metal dust on it just with the kind of projects that I'm doing. So let's just disconnect this battery, huh? Or I suppose actually I have two routes. I could tap into the USB port, have my five volt from the battery coming in to charge this thing's battery, but I think I'd rather remove some weight from the whole setup, take out the battery entirely, if that works. So you're getting snipped. Goodbye, little TP Nano. It was a great 20 minutes of shooting I had with you after pulling you out of the box, but now you're dead. Okay, I got the battery off the case. Now I can see what these cords go to. I'm seeing P plus, T, and P minus. So it is just standard red and black. Could have guessed that, but better safe than sorry. So now I can solder something up to this power plug and test it. Get that little guy soldered up to some bigger wires. And then that can get plugged into one of these voltage step-down converters. If you haven't seen my other videos on this, this will just take in the 20 volt from a drill battery, put it out to five volts or whatever I need for this. I know I'm kind of rushing through this, but I'm trying to show you it ain't that complicated. There we go, it's powered on. I'm sure there's a fairly wide range that it'll actually run on, but I'm going to assume that if the battery's 3.7, should be safe to run it on 3.7 or even lower because the battery's going to go down to maybe 3 as it dies. If I were tapping into the USB port, then I'd do 5, I guess. All right, let's plug her in and see if it blows up. When I flip the switch, will we get lights? Yes. <laughs> okay, so it's not fried, but does it work? Take the monitor off the regular HDMI and plug it into the shimble. There it is, right there. All right, so already proof of concept, it is running off a DeWalt battery. I am quite happy with that result, so now it's just time to come up with a clean implementation of that. Taking this battery adapter that goes from the monitor, adding an extra out port to have that run into here. I tell you what too, it's nice to be able to move my camera around without having to worry about tangling my wires on everything. So I've actually already 3D printed a new body, some minor modifications, a new tripod hole, a hole for a power output and a switch. It uh, came out looking better than usual, but still some weird layer lines. I think this filament might be clogging. So let's get this cleaned up and all our components in there. Also worth noting, without disassembling the wireless unit at all, I could have just made something like this. Basic USB-C cable to a DC power output that would plug in and do five volts. But I like the idea of cutting out the battery entirely and I wanted to remove the magnets anyway. So this unit, I'm gonna have a little DC power plug coming off of it. And on the power tool battery side, we will have a female port for that to plug into, just like that. 
Then I've got a hole for a power switch, which apparently I didn't make big enough. So I'll just melt this switch hole a little bit wider. My old designs didn't have a power switch, but I'm adding it because the battery being constantly connected to the voltage step down unit slowly drains it. So adding a switch right here allows me to not drain these batteries without having to unplug them. And this guy gets a little washer and a nut so it can be nice and secured in place. Then I'm going to harvest some parts off this first iteration of the battery adapter that I made for my camera, because I'm out of these threaded inserts right now. Get that a little melted up so it can screw in nicely. There we go. Then I just need the metal pins that will actually come in contact with the battery. For that, I'm going to steal them off the uh, one that's currently on the monitor. My print quality on this one was very mediocre. It was a proof of concept more than anything. So that's why I'm making a new one rather than just modifying this old one. I know I only made this like two weeks ago at this point, but I'm making these videos so fast. I'm learning a lot about how I use these things and in what ways I can make efficiency improvements to my gear. So those pins can melt right back into there. And then once these are hot, I just kind of hold them in place with pliers till they cool down and then check that the battery actually slots in. That does. I've got a little hole to run these wires from the back end into the main case. That will go to the power switch first, which of course I didn't make my wires long enough for. Now I can solder them in. That should do. I forgot to throw heat shrink on them. This might be goofy, but I'm just going to melt some plastic in between the leads. Just seal them in so nothing short circuits. Oh, I'm stupid. How many of you just, uh, what a dummy I am. This is just a short circuit switch at this point. It's not supposed to connect the positive and negative. It runs through the positive. So I guess that's what that is now. So then this goes in as negative. This goes in as positive. This one will run 8 volt out to the monitor. Then we do another short run off the switched battery side to another step down converter that's going to run the 3.8 volts for the wireless HDMI. That one can go into this power plug. There we go. Pack all that in, and then this plate for the battery is gonna go this way. Then I printed a new cap for this that should slot that in, and that can all get fused together into one solid piece. Should be a lot more secure than the previous iteration. All right, let's see how this fits. Perfect. So now I can get a battery plugged in, switch it on. Oh, that way's on. I should mark that. I'll just put a little dot on that side. Then I turn that little calibration screw till we get to 8 volts for the monitor. And same thing on the other one, down to 3.75-ish volts. Now it can get closed up. Or actually, not yet. I want to hard mount this wireless HDMI to it. I put a screw hole in there where I wanted it. That seems pretty firm right there. And now I can send a couple spare screws through there. Sweet. That feels sturdy. There's the unit. Now I just need a cap for this and a wire. And of course, when I decided to extend those cables, I didn't make them long enough either. I suppose the right thing to do would be put a female port on this thing and then run a male to male cable connecting them. But I think I'm out of these. I'll just connect up a new cable there real quick. It's not pretty, but that'll conduct. And then I'll run a new hole for that cable, I don't know, out of this corner comes out right there and I think for the lid on this thing instead of putting the old one and having to tear all the magnets out of it especially because I have so much empty space here now I'm just gonna 3d print a little plate and you know what I'm actually gonna trim a bit off the walls as well because without the battery this can be significantly thinner and I don't want it to interfere with this battery sliding in y'all think I still have a warranty on this thing another potential mod I believe this is the antenna and I kind of wonder if I solder some extra wire onto that if it would uh, receive better even, but I'm not using it for a long range, so I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, that print is done. I just made a little two millimeter sheet. That's really just gonna function to keep dust out of it. And although I usually like to keep my stuff serviceable, I'm just gonna melt this in place for now because the next time I need to open this, I'd probably just print a whole new case for it entirely. So I'm not too worried about being able to open the stock casing. Now I can put this thing together, so this will slot into the NPF battery holster, much less flimsy than the previous version. Then I got this little plate in case I ever want to put it on my camera. I'm going to move it back here so it's more centered. Oh yeah, there's two little pins on it, but I can just melt those in real quick. Not a big deal. Sweet. 
Then the battery goes on, HDMI cable goes from here, and with that, everything should work with the flip of the switch. It boots a little slow, but there it goes. This thing is a unit, dude. All these little wires and switches. The nice thing about just having one power solution is I can keep the monitor and the transmitter on at all times, and then just this one switch controls both of them at the same time. I am psyched about this. There you go, all-in-one, all-day power solution for monitor and transmission, and it just looks crazy. I love it. All right, I am in focus. With that, I'm gonna call it a day. I still have to make another one of these for the camera side for the uh, transmitter. I'm sure I'll get to that sooner than later because the battery on that thing died already once during this shoot. And the camera can actually get three ports, one for the camera, one for HDMI, and one for the wireless mic unit. I know this is like the third time I'm doing the same project effectively. Let me know if this is getting stale. <laughs> but to me, it's still interesting. I'm adding little things each time, making iterations on the design. And for the camera unit, I'm actually very excited to try. I got a new 3D printer in the mail today, a Bamboo A1, thanks to a very, very generous donor. Thank you. He has to stay anonymous, but you know who you are. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> so we'll get that in a video soon. Finally do the overhead shelves for the new two workbenches. And then some miniature creation with the new printer as well for a short film. Lots of exciting stuff coming up here in the end of the month. I'm very excited. Hopefully now you will not see any videos of me dropping my camera and having to fix things again because there's no cables to trip on. <laughs> as always, if you'd like to support the channel by donating or becoming a member, go to evanmonsman.com. I appreciate all the support. And with that, thank you for your time, and I will see you tomorrow.